In this video, we'll take a look at undirected graphs. So in general, graphs are used to illustrate the relationships between objects. It's something that's commonly used in many fields, including discrete mathematics as well as computer science. So the first type of graph that we'll look at is called a simple graph. Here we have what appear to be several dots that are connected to each other by a few lines. Now in graph theory, each of these dots is properly referred to as a vertex, or sometimes a node, and in each of the lines are referred to as an edge. Notice that in a simple graph, the only attributes are vertices and edges. You don't have anything fancy like loops or parallel edges. We'll get to those later. We can call the set of vertices V. So here the set V contains vertices A, B, C, and D. Notice that each edge is named after the pair of vertices that it connects to. For example, we have an edge that connects vertices B and D, so we refer to that edge as BD. Now, since this is a simple, undirected graph, the pairs are unordered. So if we wanted to, we could have referred to the edge as DB instead. So let's take a look at our original graph and add another edge. Notice that we now have two different edges that are both connected to vertices A and B. This is called a multigraph. The difference between a simple graph and a multigraph is that a multigraph allows the same pair of vertices to be connected by more than one edge. And if two edges share the same pair of vertices, we refer to those as parallel edges. Now, how would we describe this mathematically? Remember that for the simple graph, we used two sets, one for the vertices and one for the edges. For a multigraph, instead of just naming the edges after the pair of vertices to which they are connected, we use a function to help define the relationship between the set of edges and the vertices. So our set E now includes new names for the edges, which we've simply called E, followed by a different subscript for each edge. Notice that the edge now has a corresponding pair of vertices. Now at first it might seem like we're just adding additional complexity here, but doing it this way actually is necessary because it helps us distinguish between edges E1 and E5. If we just relied on naming edges after the pairs of vertices that they are connected to, we'd have no way of distinguishing them. One other thing I want you to notice is that in the function, it says that u does not equal v. Now you might be wondering why this is necessary. Hold on to that thought for a moment, and let's go to the next type of graph, and after that it should make sense. So just a quick review. For a simple graph, we have a set of vertices and edges, but no parallel edges and no loops. For a multigraph, we have parallel edges, but we still don't have any loops. So, now let's go ahead and add a loop. Now, we have an edge that simply loops back onto the same vertex from where it started, making a circle. Notice that this edge only connects to a single vertex. We call this kind of graph a pseudograph. So a pseudograph actually incorporates all of the attributes of the simple and multigraph, but it also adds loops. So let's take a look at the math again. This actually looks pretty similar to a multigraph, but one important difference is that the edge E6 only has a single vertex. Now remember earlier when we were looking at a multigraph, we noticed in the function that u does not equal v. Notice that for a pseudograph, that condition no longer applies. This is to allow for the fact that, in a loop, both ends of the same edge connect to the same vertex. Now, all of the graphs that I've talked about so far have been undirected graphs. In a directed graph, each of the edges will actually point it 
one way or the other. Unfortunately, I'm running out of time for this video, so I won't be able to go over those graphs today. So this was just a basic overview of undirected graphs for graph theory. I hope someone out there finds this useful, and once again, thanks for watching.